Hello everybody and welcome to this course on metrology. Before I formally start telling you about uh, metrology, I would like to introduce uh, myself. I am Sadash Bapa, working as professor in Bapuji Institute of Engineering and Technology, Davangere. Metrology is the science of measurement which uh, mainly deals with uh, measurement of size, form and positions. In general, for any kind of quantity to be measured, there must be a unit of measurement and it should be possible to express the quantity in numbers. Hence, metrology is concerned with uh, the establishment of units of measurements and their standards. It is concerned with establishing methods of measurement and it also deals with uh, different kinds of measuring uh, instruments. In a broader sense, it is uh, concerned with industrial inspection. It deals with inspection of uh, uh, raw materials to inspection of finished uh, components with the help of uh, standard measuring tools and uh, gauges. Metrology is used in uh, many areas such as machine tool uh, building, automobile engineering, biomedical engineering, space applications, building science, marine science and many other scientific and engineering fields. In the present course, we will be mainly dealing with uh, the dimensional metrology wherein we will be learning about precise measurement of lengths, angles, forms and positions. This course is uh, spread across 44 lectures arranged in uh, 12 uh, modules. We will be learning about uh, basic uh, definitions and terminologies related to metrology different measurement uh, uh, standards, uh, units, methods of measurements, errors in measurements and calibration aspects in uh, module number one that is introduction to metrology and in module number two we will be dealing with uh, usage of uh, different uh, measuring uh, instruments such as uh, one year caliper, micrometer, angle measuring uh, devices in module 3, we will be discussing about uh, limits, fits and tolerances, what is the need of tolerance, what are the different kinds of fits available, how to select a proper uh, uh, fit for a given uh, application, such things we will be discussing in uh, module number 3. And in module number 4, we will uh, discuss about uh, the measurement of uh, geometrical uh, features. Mainly, we will be discussing about straightness measurement and squareness measurement. And then we will move on to measurement of uh, surface finish and screw thread element uh, measurements, gear element measurements, tapered measurement and uh, radius uh, measurement. And in module number 9, we will be discussing about use of interferometry uh, for uh, measurement of uh, flatness of precise uh, surfaces. We will be discussing about construction and uh, uh, application of uh, different uh, uh, interferometers uh, available. And uh, in uh, module number 10, we will discuss about uh, different uh, types of uh, comparators and their use in uh, dimensional uh, metrology. In module number 11, we will be discussing about uh, different uh, alignment tests conducted on uh, lathe and uh, drilling uh, machines. Uh, finally, we will move to advanced uh, metrology wherein uh, we will be discussing about uh, universal measuring machines, coordinate measuring machines, in-process gauging, 
स्टेज पोजिशन मेट्रोलॉजी नैनो टेक्नोलॉजी इंस्ट्रूमेंटेशन सच एज अटोमिक फोर्स मैक्रोस्कोपी एंड फाइनली वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट ऑप्टिकल सिस्टम डिजाइनिंग आई विश यू हैप्पी लर्निंग थ्रो दिस कोर्स थैंक यू now let us start the first lecture of the series now let us understand what is the meaning of the measurement let us have a look at our daily activities like uh, buying things like grocery gold petrol and cloth measuring emission level of vehicles inspecting work pieces produced in a shift drug delivery to a patient measuring blood pressure body weight body temperature etc in all these activities we are trying to measure a physical quantity like pressure volume length etc now let us take uh, a simple example of buying things like cloth and let us understand the measurement process in detail when we go to a cloth shop and ask for a certain length of material immediately the shopkeeper will take uh, the material and he will take a measuring tape and he measures the cloth of the required length and cuts it and gives it now in this process we can understand that in the process of measurement a physical quantity is required for which we have to give the value and then we require a standard or a reference for measurement process and then there is a comparison process that means the shopkeeper will open the cloth he will spread the cloth on a table and then the length of the cloth that is to be cut is the physical quantity and then the shopkeeper takes the measuring tape and this is the reference for us to measure the length and then he compares the cloth length with the measuring tape this is the process of comparison that means in any measurement process we have three entities first one is the physical quantity in our example length and then a reference for measurement that is measuring scale and then process of comparison that means comparing length of cloth with the measuring tape so that is the third entity now let us look at this simple picture and try to understand the measurement process in, in detail so we have uh, the datum on which the measurement process takes place and then we have uh, work piece okay the length of the work piece is to be measured and then we have a butt plate against which the work piece is pressed and then we need a reference for example a steel rule or a measuring tape and again the steel rule is placed on the work piece and it is pressed against the cut plate now we start measuring the length of the work piece from this point from this edge of the work piece so this is the reference point and then we look for the coinciding division on the steel rule which division on the steel rule is coinciding with the other edge so this becomes the measurement point the difference between the reference point and the measurement point is the length of the work piece that is the physical quantity that is to be measured if the measurement process is very simple like measuring the length of a work piece or a diameter of work piece using the micrometer we can do that we can just hold micrometer in our uh, hand and we can take the work piece in our other hand and then we can measure so in this case datum is not required so in some cases datum will be required in some cases datum will not be required now let us try to understand the importance of measurement process so i gave some examples of our daily activities 
wherein measurement is carried out in all activities. That means, measurement is everywhere and it is playing a vital role in our lives. Now, measurement is very essential to ensure safety and effectiveness of healthcare diagnosis and treatment. We measure many parameters when we go to a hospital like blood pressure measurement, blood composition measurement, etcetera, etcetera. The measurement that is carried out should be accurate and it should be precise so that proper treatment can, can be given to the patient. Then when we take the example of manufacturing uh, industry, we measure the composition of material. We look for uh, maybe carbon percentage in uh, steel and other alloying element composition. So, if the measurement uh, of these composition is proper, then we can build good products. Then to ensure safe operation of vehicles and machine tools, we measure parameters like speed of the vehicle or machine tool, what is the feed rate of uh, various slides of the machine tool, what is the vibration level of machine tools or vehicle, whether the machine tools and vehicles are under safe condition, safe running condition. So, to ensure that measurement is very, very essential. Also to ensure proper food supply, whether any uh, dangerous substances are included in the food supply to ensure that we need to measure the food that is supplied. Then to ensure consistency of time standards, so that we can have comfortable communication between two different places or two different countries. To ensure fairness between buyer and seller, measurement is very important. We gave the example of buying a cloth. The seller takes a measuring tape and he measures and he gives the cloth. Now, the buyer also can take another scale and he can cross check whether the length that is supplied is correct or not. That means, both the scales, scales used by buyer and seller uh, should be comparable. That means, they should be comparable to some national or international standards, so that there will not be any dispute between buyer and seller. Now, to evaluate newly developed products and processes, we need to conduct measurement. We should, to, we have, we after the completion of the assembly, we have to check what is the performance level with respect to the uh, uh, cutting uh, parameters or the vibration level, etc., or the health of the machine tool. We need to conduct many kinds of measurements. To get accurate and precise data in scientific research, we should have measurement process. Now, let us move to understand the definition of the metrology. It is the science of measurement and there are national metrology institutes around the world to make sure that the measurement we use are fit for the purpose. Now, metrology has three basic activities. The first one is defining the internationally accepted units of measurement, for example, length, time, etcetera. Then realization of the units of measurement in practice, for example, we have defined the length. Now, how to realize it so that we can use it for the commercial purpose or for the benefit of the society and then establishing traceability linking measurements made in practice to reference standard. That means, whatever instruments we make should be comparable to the national and international standards. Now, metrology has the following three basic subfields, scientific or fundamental metrology, applied technical or industrial metrology and the third one is legal metrology. Now, let us understand the these three subfields. The first one is scientific or fundamental metrology. So, this deals with the establishment of quantity systems, unit systems, units of measurement, the development of new measurement methods, realization of measurement standards and transfer of traceability from these standards to users in society. In India, National Physical Laboratory is the custodian of various primary standards. Now, we can see this uh, photograph which is concerned with thermal imaging metrology for health care. Lot of research work is going on in the thermal imaging which is used to detect uh, cancer in earlier stages or the fever uh, scanning 
or uh, the healing process in the body. So, such re research activities and establish establishing corresponding measurement methods and measurement standards is the activity which is carried out in scientific metrology. What kind of uh, measuring instrument should be used for such newly developed methods? What kind of uh, environment uh, should be provided? Whether any specific conditions are there with regard to temperature, humidity, pressure or any vibration proof uh, uh, datum surfaces are needed and how to conduct the measurements, what are the guidelines for conducting the measurement process, how to report uh, the measurement results, these are some of the activities which come under scientific metrology. Now, we will move to applied technical or industrial metrology. It deals with the application of measurement science to manufacturing processes and their use in the society. It ensures the suitability of the measurement instruments selected and their calibration and quality control of the products. So, in this area emphasis is given on the measurement themselves and traceability of the calibration of the measuring devices to ensure confidence in the measurements. We can take the example of uh, this uh, drawing and we will try to understand more about industrial metrology. Now, you can see in this figure we have uh, various parameters to be measured like diameter of the component. There are uh, three holes of different diameter. There is one bigger hole at the center and then we have uh, depth that is to be measured. Recess is there for which uh, we have to measure the depth of the research, uh, uh, recess or width of the recess we have to measure and various uh, lengths we have to measure and there is a threaded uh, portion here. We need to measure the thread uh, elements like pitch of the thread, flank angle, measure diameter, minor diameter etcetera, etcetera. Now, to measure all these parameters we need to select appropriate instruments. Sometimes uh, we may require the measurement of parallelism between two surfaces and then perpendicularity between uh, two surfaces and then what is the form of the drilled hole, whether there is any taper or whether it is uh, bell shaped or drum shaped or whether any out of roundness is there. Such parameters uh, we need to measure for which appropriate selection of uh, instrument is necessary. So, industrial metrology helps in all these uh, activities. Sometimes we may have to uh, measure uh, inspection, uh, we have to make inspection fixtures so that uh, the inspection can be carried out uh, easily. So, all such things are carried out in industrial metrology. Now, we will move to legal metrology which deals with the activities which result from statutory requirements. It is concerned with uh, legal requirements of measurement processes, units of measurement, measuring instruments and methods of measurement. To establish necessary rules and regulations on qualities and control of measuring method instruments and their use. Now, statutory requirements might arise from the needs of protection of health, public safety, the environment, enabling taxation, protection of consumers and to establish fair trade. This helps in detecting frauds in measurement and to book offender for trials wherever necessary. Now, let us try to understand the forensic metrology which is a part of uh, legal metrology. This applies to forensic sciences, forensic laboratories perform numerous measurements and tests to support both criminal and civil legal actions. The examples of forensic metrology activities are given below. The measurement of blood or breath alcohol content, the quantification of controlled substances both for net weight and purity. For example, what is the purity of gold? So, that can be checked in forensic metrology. Then length measurements of firearm barrels. So, you can see here in this picture we have a firearm barrel. The length of the barrel we need to check the diameter of the barrel, the surface finish, the various uh, the, the form of the barrel we need to check and then latent print examination. For example, fingerprint examination, 
question document examination like uh, to check whether there is any forgery of signature and DNA analysis to establish biological relationships. Then 3D laser scanning of crime scene uh, can be taken so that it can be visited again and again to study the crime scene. Now, the results of forensic measurements are used to determine if a person is charged with a crime or may be used to determine a statutory sentencing enhancement. Now, there is recently there is a another kind of metrology which is evolved because of the advancement in nano technology area. Now, we need to measure nano holes in uh, the nano structured particles for which we have to design and develop nano probes which can enter into nano holes to measure diameter, distance between uh, two uh, holes etcetera. Nano particle characterization like what is the shape of the nano particle, what is the size of the particle, what is the pace between two uh, particles such things uh, uh, we need to measure to characterize the newly developed uh, composite materials, nano composite materials. Then in the last few decades various uh, measurement uh, methods have been developed to for the characterization of uh, nano materials like nano uh, CMM is developed which uh, physically measures the MEMS uh, products and nano products and then uh, scanning electron microscopy, X-ray diffraction, tunneling electron microscopy, atomic force microscopy, all these are developed which will uh, aid uh, the characterization of nano particles, nano devices etcetera. And then recently laser based systems are developed which aid in inspection of nano devices. And there is a need to establish nano metrology standards. Uh, so that uh, in all parts of the world same standards can be used and the measurements that is carried out uh, in the nanometrology will be comparable uh, and usable throughout the world. Now, let us uh, try to understand what is the role of metrology in the innovation. Now, the manufacturing industries always try to develop new kinds of methods, new kinds of products and then the manufacturing of precision engineering components which are used in aircrafts and space crafts have very, very tight uh, specifications. So, we need to design and develop uh, new methods of uh, uh, metro metrological methods and new kinds of metrological instruments which will be able to measure the tight uh, specifications. Now, if we study this diagram, we will come to know that whenever there is a new idea generated, a lot of uh, R and D work will be carried out on that new idea that is generated and computer aided design and analysis will be carried out on that particular idea to develop uh, uh, various uh, models and to prepare the drawings. Once the drawings are created, they are, they, we, we move for uh, computer aided uh, manufacturing where we manufacture the components as per the computer aided uh, drawing that is provided using different kinds of uh, inputs. Now, if the components are new type of uh, components having uh, very complicated uh, uh, structures or profiles. We have to develop new methods of measurement, new instruments for measuring that complex profile. So, we should have uh, uh, innovative metrology, we should uh, invent new kinds of instruments, in, uh, we should invent new kinds of fixtures, inspection fixtures. So, that measurement becomes or inspection of the component becomes fast and accurate. Now, the metrology is also applied in the assembly and uh, testing of uh, the new products that is developed. Finally, the uh, components and products are packed and dispatched. Now, let us try to understand what are the various objectives of uh, metrology. Metrological instruments are used in various sections of a manufacturing organization. They are used in tool room, used in machine shop, foundry shop, standards room, press shop, electroplating shop, paint shop, at all places the metrological instruments are used. In such a big organization, the metrology will have uh, many objectives. We will study some of the objectives. To determine 
the type of measuring instrument needed by the plant and to ensure that they are well maintained in the plant by periodical calibration. Depending upon the type of activities going on in the shop, they have to suggest the quality control department will have to suggest what type of instrument is required, whether uh, uh, in process gauging is required or off uh, process gauging is required, what should be the range of the instrument, what should be the accuracy level of the instrument and then any special uh, type of uh, equipments are needed. For example, I will write a sketch here, say we have uh, a component which has an internal groove like this. I am just writing the sketch. So, there is a work piece with internal groove like this. Then the quality control department should suggest appropriate uh, instrument. So, this uh, so in the places like this one can use an inside uh, micrometer caliper of this type and also sometimes we may be having uh, some work pieces having some boards like this which are very deep. Then the quality control department will have to suggest uh, some uh, gauges or inspect measuring instruments so that uh, the depth of the groove can be measured or the diameter of the groove can be measured or sometimes surface finish of that groove can be measured. In that case, we may have to use uh, some long uh, probes like this. So, the quality control department will suggest appropriate measuring instruments needed by the plant and also it ensures that say every instrument will undergo some sort of wear, wear and tear due to continuous usage. At regular intervals, we need to inspect all those instruments to check for whether there is any wear. If there is any wear, they should be compared with the uh, uh, accurate uh, instrumentation available in the standards room and the uh, amount of error that is there in the instrument should be recorded on the instrument. So, when we take the readings using such calibrated instruments, we should uh, account for the error that is mentioned on the instrument. And then the quality control department uh, will have to see what is the process capabilities of newly developed process, whether the new process developed are really capable of uh, doing what is expected or whether they are going out of the process or what kinds of uh, changes are necessary so that uh, the process capability increases. Now, another objective of uh, the metrology is standardization of measuring methods used with reference to the prevailing standards. That means, whenever new products are developed, we need to measure, we need to develop new uh, methods of uh, measurement and then what are the prevailing standards we should consult and then we should suggest the measuring instruments. That means, we should standardize the various kinds of methods as per the prevailing standard. And then metrology department have to provide proper solution to the measuring problem arising in the shaft flow. Sometimes the operator will ask for suggestions how to check the particular parameter is unaware of using the instrument and some sort of training is to be provided to the new operators. So, quality control department will teach them how to use the instruments and how to come out of the problem that arise in the workshops. And sometimes uh, very complicated uh, components like uh, rotor blade uh, will have to be inspected. So, in such cases uh, we need to uh, devise uh, special inspection fixtures. One such example is shown here. We have the rotor blade which is having very complex shape. So, we need to uh, design and fabricate uh, a holding device for holding the rotor blade and then uh, we have indicator to measure the various parameters of the rotor blade. And then 
application of statistical quality control techniques uh, to the various uh, processes to study whether the processes uh, are under control or not. We can see this uh, diagram wherein we have uh, uh, upper control limit, uh, lower control limit and x axis time and y axis is variable and we have various measuring points and then the center line indicates the average of variable size. Now, the measurement uh, points are scattered well within the upper control limit and lower control limit. This indicates that the process is under control. Whenever a measuring point goes beyond the upper control limit or beyond the lower control limit, then uh, necessary action should be taken so that the process is brought back under control. The act necessary action may be in the form of uh, changing the uh, machine setup or changing the computer programs, etcetera. Now, let us try to understand what is the need of measurement or inspection. Now, let us try to understand what is the difference between measurement and inspection. So, in the manufacturing area, we need to produce various kinds of components having various uh, types of features like uh, depth, length, breadth, surface finish, palism, etcetera, etcetera. Now, all these features we have to measure and we have to quantify them. So, such a process is called measurement. Sometimes we have to inspect the work pieces to just accept or reject whether the work piece is uh, ok or not. Only that information is required and no need of uh, uh, us uh, measuring the physical variable. So, such, a, such an activity is known as inspection. In the industrial sense, both the terminologies are used identically. Now, to ensure that the products supplied to the customer are within the agreed specification. So, whenever a customer gives order, he will give what are the various uh, specifications of the product, what type of activity is required, what is the size, what is the weight, what uh, uh, functions are needed, uh, expected out of the product. So, all those things he will explain. Now, before we supply the product to the customer, we should compare what are the specifications of the customer and what is that we are supplying. If they match, then only we should supply the product to the customer. Now, inspection is also needed to monitor the process performance. This will ensure that the number of rejects is as small as is economically practicable. That means, the, whenever the process goes beyond the control, now we may have to do some changes in the process so that it is brought back to the control. Now, to ensure that the raw materials, purchased parts and components conform to the purchaser's specification, the manufacturing industries place order for various kinds of raw materials. For example, steel, aluminum, etcetera of different length and different shape. They also place order for purchased parts like fasteners, electric motors, etcetera, etcetera and some uh, components. Now, before we accept the uh, components or, or the raw materials as purchase parts, we should check whether they are as per our specifications. Then only we should accept them, so that defective parts will not move to the assembly area or the manufacturing area. Now, there is a concept called interchangeability. The mating parts are made at different places and different countries due to the mass production concept and all these mating parts, uh, when randomly selected and when we match them, they should fit properly without any individual fitting operation. This is known as interchangeability. So, to achieve interchangeability, it is very essential that we uh, produce the various components and parts as per the standard using standard instrumentation. And to evaluate the possibility of rework of defective parts, now, the inspector has rejected some parts. Now, we have to really check whether the, some rework can be performed, so that they can be accepted again. So, for that we need to inspect defective parts. 
and to exclude sources of error deficiencies in the process, uh, uh, we need to conduct the measurement process. Sometimes we go for uh, limit gauging. To establish limit gauging, we need to inspect. Sometimes in the manufacturing area, what happens is we need not have to actually measure the size of the variable. For example, the diameter of the bore or length of the bore or uh, the depth like that. What is needed is whether they are within the acceptable limit or not. So, actual measurement is not required. So, such a system is called limit gauging. To establish limit gauging also, we need to conduct uh, inspection. So, this is uh, uh, this indicates that there is a need for inspection to establish limit gauging. Now, to achieve reverse engineering also measurement is very, very essential. Sometimes uh, we have the part, but corresponding uh, drawings are not available. In that case, we have to inspect the component that is available for its composition, for its uh, where, uh, where the physical sizes like length, depth, breadth, the size of the, size of the hole or the surface finish uh, uh, that is prevailing etcetera. All these uh, things we have to measure by conducting the inspection and then we have to prepare the drawing and then we can go for producing such components. Now, to augment the reputation of the manufacturer and to help him to become world class manufacturer measurement is very, very essential. We need to conduct measurement uh, maybe 100 percent inspection if the components are critical or batch type of inspection and we have to eliminate remove all the defective parts and only good components should be good. Products should be supplied to the customer so that the customer will be happy and we get repeated orders from the customer. Now, let us try to understand the classification of inspection, how the inspection procedures are classified. So, one type of classification is depending upon the labor that is involved that is manual inspection, visual inspection, automatic inspection. In manual inspection what happens is the operator will take the workpiece that is to be inspected, he will take the appropriate measuring instrument and he will check the parameter for example, length or diameter of hole or surface finish. So, the this is called the manual inspection. So, this uh, process sometimes becomes very slow and it is subjected to the effects of fatigue of the operator. And in the visual inspection, no instruments are used, the work pieces are inspected by the operator for any defects like uh, the presence of burrs or the so presence of any cracks, blow holes etcetera, etcetera no instrumentation is used. At the most, the operator may use a magnifying lens. The third type of inspection is automatic inspection. So, this can be contact type inspection or non-contact type inspection. So, in this process, the intervention of the operator is not there. After the production of the component, it is cleaned and then it is uh, placed on the uh, measuring machine. For example, a coordinate measuring machine wherein the probe will uh, touch the various parts of the component and the various uh, physical quantities are uh, measured. In non-contact type, uh, light based uh, measurement systems are used and uh, the various parameters like uh, surface finish, diameter of the component etcetera are measured without any contact with the work piece. So, this non-contact type automatic inspection can be used during the uh, process, it is in process gauging is also possible. Now, the second type of uh, classification is based upon the area of inspection, where the inspection is carried out. So, we have different types like receiving inspection, first piece inspection, process inspection, batch inspection, final inspection and tool and gauge inspection. Now, the rece receiving inspection is the manufacturing industry places order for various raw materials 
parts. So, when we receive them, we have to inspect them for all the physical parameters, the composition, etcetera, etcetera. So, this is known as receiving inspection. If there are any defective parts supplied by the supplier, we have to reject them so that defective components will not move into manufacturing and assembly area. Then CAD to part analysis or first piece inspection. Now, based upon the CAD that is provided, we produce the first piece and now we have to use the different kinds of instruments to measure the various kinds of uh, physical parameters to check whether all the parameters are as per the CAD drawing. If there are any errors, we need to make some changes in the CAD and again we have to uh, produce uh, the piece and again we have to adopt the first piece inspection till we get the first piece which is acceptable and then we can start the mass production of that component. Now, the process inspection is during the process itself we can conduct the inspection. For example, I gave the example of non-contact inspection of inspection process wherein uh, the parts are inspected during the machining process. We can take the example of a grinding process. So, whenever the grinding process is going on without stopping the grinding machine, we can uh, use uh, a laser light. Uh, laser light will fall on uh, the work piece and when the work piece achieves, attains the correct size, uh, the the light that is reflected, amount of light that is reflected is sensed and then uh, proper instruction are given to the machine tool for stoppage of the machine tool. And then we have uh, batch inspection, a batch of uh, components are collected and they are based upon the formalities and then the decision is taken to accept the batch or not. And in the final inspection, once all the processor or processes are completed, uh, we need to and then uh, when all the components are assembled to make the product, final inspection we need to carry out to check whether painting is over or not, whether all sub assemblies are uh, uh, properly assembled, whether the uh, movement of all parts, moving parts is uh, correct or not or whether there is any leakage or vibration uh, levels are exceeding the limits. So, such things are inspected before we dispatch the product to the customer. And then tool and gauge inspection, all instruments are subjected to wear. So, at regular intervals, we need to calibrate the instruments with the help of instruments available in the standards room and then uh, we need to record what is the amount of error. So, when we use such instruments, we have to account for the error that is mentioned on the gauges. Now, let us conclude the first uh, lecture. Now, let me summarize the lecture. In this lecture, we tried to understand uh, what is the measurement uh, process and then uh, what are the various uh, objectives of uh, metrology, what is the need for measurement process, what are the different kinds of inspection processes. In the next lecture, we will continue with the other basic concepts. Thank you.